on my last camp I had some difficulties keeping warm because the temperatures were about minus 18, minus 20 and uh, I mistakenly brought the wrong sleeping pad with me. I didn't check my gear, first mistake, and uh, ended up bringing a sleeping pad that's rated for summer use only. I thought I'd take this opportunity to make a short video to show you the variations I tried, what worked, what kind of worked, and what definitely didn't work. I'm not a survivalist nor am I any sort of outdoors expert. I'm just a noob and this video is just some observations on what I experienced when I was camping at minus 20 degrees in the wrong, with the wrong gear. Please bear in mind that my sleeping bag has a comfort limit of minus 20 but a upper limit of minus 30 degrees so I had some margin of safety. Also where I was camped was a 20 minute walk away to my car so I could have actually packed up and left at any time. Be smart when camping and don't push your gear beyond its limits. Okay so here is my original setup with the exception of course that the sleeping pad I thought was my Thermares Neo Air Xtherm which is rated for uh, I think more than minus 20 with an R value of 6.9. What I actually had, and what I have here again, is the Trekology UL80, which has a R value ranging between 1.6 and 2, making it only a summer bag, and certainly not suitable for the temperatures that I found myself in. To keep me off the snow, I have a sheet of Tyvek, and then on top of that, I had a half inch thick foam mat, topped by a layer of Reflectix, which basically covers my head and torso. On top of that then is the Trichology UL sleeping bag. And then I've got the Thermarest Polar Ranger sleeping bag, rated to minus 20. And then the outer layer is a quilt from Enlightened Equipment. It's the Revelation quilt. The footbox of the Thermarest sits inside the footbox of the, the quilt and the quilt straps then go underneath the sleeping bag to keep it in place. Once I discovered that the I had the wrong sleeping pad with me, I decided to try to add my insulation from underneath. So my first step was to cut as many pine, small pine branches as I could. I show a few here just for illustration purposes. There's no point in me cutting, cutting down wood and branches if I'm not going to use, use it. So this is just for illustration. But I had approximately a two to three inch thick layer of pine branches along the entire length of my uh, sleeping pad underneath the Tyvek in the hope also that the Tyvek would protect the sleeping pad from uh, being punctured. And on top of that then, as before, I had the foam pad followed by the sleeping pad, then the, the Reflectix, then the sleeping bag, and the quilt on top. This did not work. The cold came right through everything. And uh, yeah, it was uncomfortable. Okay, the next iteration was to put my quilt inside my sleeping bag, and then underneath the sleeping pad, I put the Reflectix and then I got all of my clothes anything that I could use to isolate or insulate myself from the From the cold coming up to the floor in, even including my sit pad and uh, actually this Configuration worked relatively well the only problem with it was the quilt puffed up so much inside the uh, Sleeping bag that it was actually difficult to move at all but it did actually warm me because I presume by this filling up it filled all of the available dead space inside the sleeping bag. However, so much so that I was squeezed inside the sleeping bag and it was very claustrophobic. So I had to come up with another solution. The final solution I came up with and the one that I stuck with for most of the night was to uh, keep the extra clothes on top of the Tyvek and under the sleeping pad. Effectively then the sleeping pad was pretty much only for comfort. 
it did, didn't provide any warmth as such. And inside the sleeping bag then I put the foam mat under me and then on top I put the uh, Reflectix and inside the Reflectix I folded my sit pad and uh, this had kept my torso actually quite quite nice and warm and uh, certainly insulated me from the floor. I had seen this solution done before with the Reflectix and foam. I think it was uh, a British YouTuber called Bex Bug Out Survivor and uh, he had this concept of extending the life or the range of your sleeping bag by having a uh, half inch or having certainly having some foam on top of your body inside the sleeping bag. I think Reflectix works quite well in reflecting heat but it needs to have air space. It can't be pressed up against the surface. He was of the opinion that the shiny, shiny surface, the reflective surface, should reflect upwards and outwards to keep the reflected cold out. But this is shiny on both sides so well why not use something like this to reflect the cold out and then reflect the heat back down to me and then the effectiveness of that can be improved by folding a piece of foam inside the Reflectix. So this is only a small piece. Uh, if I got another piece approximately half an inch thick like the what I have underneath, cut it to shape approximately that size, as you can see that, let's say, or at least cut it to a shape of at least that size, then that could actually fit over the torso and then add a few extra degrees but, and particularly with some foam actually inside adding for further insulation. So I'm back in my garage safe and sound, nice and warm. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching if you managed to make it all the way to the end. I hope it was useful and I hope to catch you out on the trail the next time. This is Kevin signing off. All the best. Moi moi.